You've driven a lot of different cars. I'm curious, is there one that maybe you've just said, this is the most fun? I mean, you've done off-road, you've done IndyCar, NASCAR, a bunch of others, I'm, I'm sure. Recently, you've even driven some trucks through Robbie Gordon's series. Yeah, and that's honestly the, if I go back to my roots, it was probably the off-road stuff that was the most fun. You know, the Mickey Thompson off-road series that we did back in the day was just so much fun. Uh, getting to drive the trucks with Robbie, doing this stuff that we've been doing out in the desert lately has been just a blast. One of the most fun cars I ever drove, though, and I don't know if they'll ever be the same again, was when it was IndyCar Champ Car. Right. You know, the cars were like 1,800 pounds. They were 1,000 horsepower. I mean, shoot, we averaged 230s at California Speedway and hit speeds oh, of 250. You know, so just the technology that was in those cars and how they put you in the back of the seat, they were some of the coolest cars I've ever driven. We were teammates at Hendrick Motorsports, some great memories for me. You won a race in the, in the 25 car for Rick Hendrick. Tell us about that experience and, and also, you know, how has that helped, maybe not just in, you know, in racing, but how that experience working with somebody like Rick Hendrick and driving for him and how that experience has kind of led to other things, maybe business or in life. Yeah, well, I can definitely say, you know, driving for Hendrick Motorsports was the highlight of my career, for sure. And being able to be teammates with you guys, you know, I mean, Jeff, the stuff that you've accomplished over the years, to be able to, to tap into that firsthand, you know, was a really, really good experience for me. And I learned so much from it, not only from the racing side, but, you know, the stuff that you taught me behind the scenes, you know, how to handle certain scenarios. You know, Rick had a big hand in that as well. You know, being able to, to tap into that kind of experience was, was huge for me in my career. My dad and my uncle prepared me a lot for racing and motorsports, but the level of what you guys were able to do things at Hendrick Motorsports and the stuff that you've experienced, balancing all those things between the guys at the shop, what goes on behind the scenes, stuff like this, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, I learned a lot at Hendrick Motorsports through you, through Jimmy and through, through Rick and, and the teammates that I've had over there. Dale Jr., you know, that last year that I was with Hendrick Motorsports, you know, it's, it was really cool to be able to pull from that kind of, gosh, size, I guess, power in motorsports and, and learn from it. Yeah, no, those were great years. I mean, we had a good time. It was certainly a lot of fun being teammates with you. And I think we, we both know it's like to get beat up pretty bad by Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. The track. <laughs> you know, the one thing that, that was really cool about that time in, in my life was that we raced hard. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of success. But at the same time, we had a good group of friends there, you know, between you and I and Jimmy and the stuff that we did, you know, behind the scenes, too. I think that we did a good job of being competitive on the racetrack, having a lot of fun but then behind the scenes really experiencing life to its fullest too. And I enjoy those, those parts of my career. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I, I think back, you know, the dynamic and the chemistry. I don't know if I've even ever experienced it like that all the years I drove for Hendrick, like it was those years when you were there because we were friends, because we we're doing stuff, hanging out off the track as much as we were competing against one another on yeah. the track. It's fun times. It was a good time. Uh, so all the events you've done, you've done the Daytona 500, uh, of course, now you're going to do the Baja 1000, but all the events, is there one favorite moment or, or event that you've participated in? When I got to be a part of the Daytona 500 myself, I didn't have an appreciation for that like I did the Indy 500 because I grew up watching my uncle right. so much on the IndyCar side, right? But as soon as I was able to roll off, I'll never forget, we, we were pretty close to each other, my very first Daytona 500, and I remember looking around, being in my car, and I, for a second, everything happened so quick, and here we are getting ready to race, and it was like, Jeff Gordon... Rusty Wallace, you know, all these guys that, you know, I've been watching for years. That was probably the biggest event moment in my life, in my career, is rolling off for that very first Daytona 500. That's cool. I had a, a similar one for my first Daytona 500 also. Is there, and I go, I go through this a lot, I don't have a great memory. You and I have talked about this before. We don't have great <laughs> memories, but the ones I probably remember the most are the ones that got away or the ones that I wish I could have done, done over. Are there some races that stand out to you that you say, man, if I could have that one over again? I think, um, and again, based on memory, I can't even tell you what year, but it was the first year that Jimmy won the Daytona 500 and I got second. You know, and I think that I look back at that one, I look at it, it's such 2006. an opportunity. Was it 2006? Yeah, that um, was his first year. Yeah. So yes, exactly right. That was, that was my last year with Ganassi going into, before I signed on with Hendrick Motorsports. I had a choice there at the end to pick kind of Ryan Newman or Jimmy. And Jimmy being such a good friend, you know, I, I chose him to push and go for the win. I wasn't really gonna have the opportunity at that time, but I look back on that and I realized still how young I was in my NASCAR career and how little I still knew about really how to draft and, and run Daytona. And sometimes it, I, I go to sleep at night going, man, if I, if I would've just known what I knew at the end of my career, at that moment, maybe I would've had an opportunity to win that race. But that's one that I feel like got away, but at the same time, 
I almost celebrated it like it was my win because Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy won, you know, and I'll never forget. So after that race, and I, you know, I never thought about dollar signs. You know, we always just go racing because we love motorsports. And at the end of that race, Tony Glover put his arm around me and goes, hey, Mears Gang, good job, man. He goes, you're a millionaire. And I go, what are you talking about, dude? I got second. And he goes, come on over here. And he showed me, you know, they used to post it on the side of the yeah, truck. Yeah. And you go down and see the winnings. And it was like 1.6 or something for second place. And I was like, <laughs> this is crazy. I get to race and I get to make money like this. That was one of those moments where I was frustrated that I didn't win, but also so many firsts in my life. And it was a good experience as well. Yeah. No, Daytona, there's nothing quite like it, especially yeah. the payday. Absolutely. Appreciate you joining us, Casey. And thanks to all of you for watching Around the Track. Stay tuned for upcoming guests.